Welcome to the Agoracom.com CEO Interviews, where we feature great undiscovered small cap companies to the small cap investment community. Welcome to the Agoracom Investor Relations CEO Interview Program, where our primary goal is to expose great undiscovered small cap companies to vast retail audiences. I'm Al O'Grady. On today's show, we have with us the President and CEO of Free West Resources, Mr. Mac Watson. Free West Resources is a Canadian-based mineral exploration company focused on acquiring, exploring, and developing quality gold, base metal, and chromite properties. The company zeroes in on classical geological settings with specific interests in eastern Canada. Free West Resources trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol FWR. Mr. Watson, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm glad to be on it. Okay. Mac, uh, the date of today's recording, Tuesday, February 10th. Last week, uh, February 5th to be exact, uh, you guys had a press release that crossed the wires, and I'm just reading the uh, the headline verbatim. Uh, Free West intersects 30% CR203 over 124 meters at Black Thor. Of course, uh, CR203, uh, chemical symbol for chromite, if I'm correct on that. Uh, tell us more about uh, that press release, 30%. That's a fairly impressive uh, statistic. Well, I think, uh, Al, it indicates that uh, we're dealing with a very thick zone of chromite, uh, you know, especially uh, compared to uh, other chromite deposits in, in Canada. And I can think of one... Uh, the, the Bird River in Manitoba, and they actually had a feasibility study done on it, uh, you know, it was quite a few years ago, but uh, they, they were only averaging seven meters, so when you compare uh, what we're coming up with on the Black Thor, it's, it's uh, sounds like it could be huge, and it is. What, what was your, uh, your reaction to finding out uh, that sort of concentration? The first hole uh, back last fall, when we hit, uh, what was it, 100 and, uh, I think it was, about 100, yeah, 100 meters, you know that was a big surprise. Since then, uh, they're all surprises, but they're the surprises we we now more or less expect to to hit uh, because we uh, what we're drilling is a, is a stratiform uh, chromite deposit, chromite layers, and um, they are normally uh, you know a, a pretty good size. So uh, there may be uh, some faulting and, and, and structural problems there from now and then, but uh, we expect to hit every hole. Okay. Now let's talk more about uh, the Black Thor. We haven't mentioned, uh, for those that are new to your story, this is up in the uh, McFalds Lake region, uh, the James Bay Lowlands, uh, northern Ontario. There's really a, a mineral smorgasbord, if you will, up in the McFalls Lake. I mean, gold, copper, nickel, they all have uh, very high concentrations. Yet you're focusing uh, on chromite. Uh, is that really your, your strategy, to look at chromite, or are you also looking at uh, the other uh, minerals, gold, copper, nickel, etc.? At the moment, we, we have two drills uh, operating, and uh, we're focusing on the, on the black Thor chromite zone. But really, we, uh, we, we have uh, some excellent targets for, for nickel, copper, platinum, palladium. We will be uh, uh, at some date, whether it's soon or a little later, I'm not sure, uh, we'll be drilling those, those, uh, those targets. Okay, so in a nutshell, though, your, your primary interest is, uh, your primary focus is on the chromite, uh, where you are right now? Uh, yeah, it, it is at the moment. We do feel very confident that uh, because we've uh, intersected, uh, in, in that press release we mentioned that we've intersected some nickel, copper, platinum, palladium. Uh, so we know the, the, it's in the system, and uh, we feel quite confident that uh, when we uh, start drilling these targets, that the chances are very good that we're going to... Uh, come up with some massive sulfides. Let's, uh, f again, focus our attention on chromite for, for a second. Uh, give us uh, the bigger picture story as far as the demand for chromite and the uses, uh, et cetera. About, uh, I guess, 50% of the production, uh, the world's production, comes from South Africa. And then they have uh, you know, very, large, uh, very large deposits. They're thin uh, compared to ours. I think they're only even in, in you know, just a few meters, but they also hold um, platinum, palladium, uh, within the uh, within the chromite, the use the main use of chromite is, goes into um, ferrochrome. It's melted into ferrochrome, and then from ferrochrome, uh, stainless steel re requires uh, seventeen percent of stainless steel um, is ferrochrome. So it's it's uh, you have to have it to make stainless steel. You it's uh, you have to have it, and it takes a 
to 2.5 tons of chromite to make one ton of ferrochrome. Uh, it's a metal that, that uh, you, you, it's absolutely essential to, to have, and um, since there's no production in North America, uh, I think this would be, uh, certainly be very, very important for, uh, for the, uh, the steel companies in North America to uh, have something in their backyard if, uh, if this is developed, and I think it will be. Okay. Uh, the steel companies in North America, is that your demand, or is really uh, China driving uh, demand for chromite as well? Well, I, I guess it's probably China uh, that really is really driving it. But uh, certainly, if there's um, there's steel companies in in North America, would certainly be very uh, keen on uh, having a, a source, uh, in, in, you know, within within North America. It's certainly uh, it's always better to have a secure source uh, close by than uh, to uh, have something, you know, have something in say South Africa or. Or, or Kazakhstan or Turkey. Okay, let's uh, again focus our attention back at uh, the Black Thor. Uh, obviously, you, you uh, doing some drilling as far as the chromate goes. You're also looking at uh, other metals uh, as a gravy, if you will. So, in essence, for 2009, uh, where, where do you go from here? What are your uh, short-term and uh, medium-term uh, plans? Well, I think the first thing we've got to do is we've got to establish what we have at the Black Thor. And then that, in other words, we've got to drill off the Black Thor uh, zone. We have to drill um, to the northeast. At, at the moment, we've we're filling in. We've the first hole was was drilled last fall, and then we and then we moved up uh, 1,600 meters, and we and we uh, intersected the chromate there. So we're infilling at the moment, but very shortly we'll be moving to the northeast and uh, getting a, a, a handle on uh, how far to the northeast it does uh, extend. And we'll be doing the same thing uh, going to the southwest to our bo- our border. So. Uh, I guess I guess number one is is to get a handle on the potential size and grade uh, of the Black Thor zone, and at the same time, um, you know, decide whether we'll probably be doing a, you know, 43-101 sometime during the year. And we're um, we're drilling at 200 meter intervals, and this may or may not be be tight enough. It may have to go to 100 meters, or it may even have to go to 50 meters. But in the meantime. This will give us a pretty good handle as, as to what we have. Uh, is weather providing any sort of uh, hurdles, obstacles, or anything like that for you right now? Uh, actually, uh, the, the weather has been very good this winter. We've uh, we've we've now got a tractor up there, a D4 tractor, so we're not using the, uh, the helicopters uh, to move the move the drill, which uh, uh, not only saves money but it also speeds up the drilling. And we've got uh, we've got a road that uh, runs from uh, from our camp right up to the drill site. That's about uh, about seven kilometers, and we've also got a you know pickup in there so we can run back and forth. We call it the Black Thor Highway. Mac, that's it as far as the uh, formal questions are concerned. Uh, as always, I leave my guest with the last word. Uh, any final thoughts? Anything you'd like to add right now? Well, I, I just should mention that we'll be at the uh, at the PDAC uh, convention coming up very shortly, first of March, and uh, we'll our booth is number two four three zero. And we'll also be uh, showing core at the core shack. So um, all you investors out there, uh, feel free to come back and come by our booth and speak to Don or I. And uh, we'll try and keep you up to date with what's happening. Fair enough. Mac, on that note, I want to thank you very much for your time and uh, sharing your thoughts with us about uh, Free West Resources. Thank you, Al. It's been my pleasure. All right. And Free West Resources trades on the TSX Venture Exchange under the symbol FWR. And you've been listening to Mac Watson, President and CEO of Free West Resources, on Agoracom's CEO interview program. I'm Al O'Grady. Thanks for joining us.